come with us over to one of those places of your choice sometime uh, at your convenience. But I, I want to tell you a little story of how I got involved in this. I was a pastor. I was a youth pastor, and then I, I planted a church. And one of the things I noticed is that over and over in Scripture, it talked about how passionate God was about the orphan. Uh, verses like James 1.27, which says, Pure and undefiled religion is taking care of widows and orphans in their distress. So, you know, for me, with so many things going on with church life and this program and this discipleship school, I knew I could get it right by just taking care of orphans. It doesn't say that anywhere else in the Bible. And so I took a group of, of our church team over to Russia, actually, in the mid-90s. And one of the verses that was really kind of in front of me that God would not get out of my mind at that time was Psalm 68, 5 and 6. And here's what it says. A father to the fatherless is God in his holy habitation and a defender of widows. God sets the lonely in families. And when I saw all these kids, we did a camp for about 150 kids. I, I just couldn't believe how beautiful they were and how they had hopes and dreams about a future. But I knew the reality of the statistics. And in Russia, these kids are kicked out of the orphanage at 15 to 16 years old. Within two years, 15% will commit suicide because of hopelessness. 70% of the girls will end up in prostitution. Some of that in the child sex slave industry, some of it because they have to to survive. And, and I thought, you know what, that is, that's unjust. That's not right. And God, what do you have to say about this as a father to the fatherless? And on one of these, these experiences in the orphanage, I had a, a whole group with us, and most of us were men, which is unusual, by the way. Uh, most mission trips, do you know 80% of trips like this are women? Do you know that? Yay for women. Uh, <laughs> But man, we need to step it up a little bit. This, this trip, I had mostly men. We walked into this, into this orphanage, and there were all these kids laying in these beds. And the orphanage director was like, be quiet, because we've just laid them down. They're sleeping. And so we walked in, and all of a sudden, this little boy in the corner sees us. And, you know, we're all going, oh, how cute these little kids are. And he shoots his head up, and he looks, and he sees us, and he goes, dad, dad? And we froze. And all of a sudden, a little girl over here on this side of the room, she, she looks up and she looks at us, she goes, Dad, 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 Dad. And pretty soon, I mean, it was mayhem. Everybody looks at us and they're saying, Dad, Dad, and they're crying and we're crying. I've got these big 280 pound guys who are, who are just tears streaming down their cheeks and the director rushes us out and we're like, we're so sorry, we apologize. We didn't mean to, to wake the kids up. He said, no, 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 it's okay. You see, most of these kids have never seen men before. And when you walked in, they thought you were their daddy coming to take them home. Well, the good news is that what, out of that trip, a church just like yours sponsored that orphanage. That's our church-to-church -church model. We take communities over here in the United States and plug them into communities overseas, and it becomes your orphanage. It becomes an extension of who you are and what you're doing. And you get to live those verses about God being a father to the fatherless because the revelation to me was that God is a father through you and I. That's called incarnational ministry. You and I are the hands and feet of Jesus himself. And not all of us have responsibility of this. I was uh, on Twitter. Do you know what Twitter is? You know, Twitter is out there. Okay, I'm a Twitterer. Thank you very much. Uh, I feel like I'm at an AA meeting. And Len Sweet, Len Sweet is a Twitterer. And I was reading that Len was writing about, about Matthew 25, where it talks about at the end of the world, all the nations are going to be gathered before the Lord. And he's going to say, well done, good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of the Lord prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry. You gave me something to eat. Thirsty. You gave me something to drink. And Len said, you know what that verse does? It means that nobody is off the hook as a Christian to take care of the poorest of the poor. Nobody. Yeah. Amen. So I want to make that easy for you. Here's what I'm going to do. Reach into your bag. Uh, in your bag, there's a red bracelet. You see this? Every day when I look at this, it's a reminder for me to pray for orphans and widows and people who are starving around the world. And there's a, a website on there. It's called Five for 50. I would invite you to go. But put this on your wrist. When I look at this and I'm eating, I'm reminded, God, I can take care of widows and orphans. And so can you. Uh, it's a reminder every day for me to pray five minutes a day. Go find us at the Children's Hope Chest booth, fill this out, and we'll draw a winner. One of you will come free to Russia or Africa. Thank you so much for your time. Great to be with you at the conference.